In this video, we're going to look at applying ratios and how we can use them to solve problems. First, we want to answer the question, what is an equivalent ratio? And then secondly, how can I apply ratios to solve problems? Remember, you can stop the video at any time and go back if you need to reference anything again. So first of all, what are equivalent ratios? And equivalent ratios can be simplified to have the same values. So just like a fraction can be simplified to um, have a, small, a smaller numerator and denominator, we can do the same thing with ratios. And so let me show you just a quick picture to explain this. So if I had the circle and I had half of it shaded, we would say that this is one half, one out of two of the parts are shaded. Now if I have the same circle and I have now four parts, I would say that I have two fourths or two out of four parts are shaded. But if it's the same size circle, then I know those are worth or they have the same value. And so I know that one half is equal to two fourths. That's exactly how it works with ratios. We actually wanna simplify ratios for the same reason. And so we can use the example um, of creating two equivalent ratios that are equivalent to six to 14. So if I have six to 14, just like I would simplify a fraction, I can simplify this, and I can see that both of these, both the numerator and the denominator would be divisible by two. So I can change it to three sevenths. Now these are both worth the same amount, and so they're equivalent. Same thing if I wanted to, and we call it scaling, you can scale the other way. So I could take, 6 14th and I could multiply by 2 and so then I would get 12 as my numerator and 28 is my denominator and I've just scaled it and I kind of like to draw this little image right here to show that I'm scaling it and so those are all equivalent 3 7 6 14th and 12 28 are all equivalent ratios we can check to see if things are equivalent in part B by simplifying them. So if I look at two, two to five and eight to 20, we wanna know if they're equivalent. Well, two to five, I can see that's already in its simplest form because five is prime and so is two, but eight to 20 can be simplified. And so I can see that I can take out a four, which should give me two as my numerator and my denominator of five and now I can see that two, two over five or two to five and two to five are equivalent. So I could say, yes, these are equivalent. So now that we know how to find them, we can actually apply them to different problems. And this is typically how you'll see a ratio or something we call a, call a proportion solved this way. I'm gonna show you two different ways um, so that you can see how to solve them. This question says, in a pizza eating contest, Xavier can eat three slices of pizza in the same amount of time Derek can eat two slices of pizza. If Derek eats eight slices of pizza, how many slices of pizza will Xavier eat? So if you're painted, if you're listening carefully to the question, you'll see, okay, so we have Xavier is eating three slices of pizza in the same amount of time as Derek can eat two. So there's our comparison. There's our initial ratio. We're comparing... Xavier and Derek. And I'm going to show you a tape diagram, which is just a visual picture. Um, so you can see what's happening, and then I'll show you how to solve it with a proportion. So it says that Xavier is going to eat three slices, and Derek is in the same time going to eat two. Okay? Well, we want to know what happens, how many pieces Xavier will eat if Derek eats eight. So I'm gonna keep this little tape ratio going to show, well now Derek's eating two more, that means Xavier ate three, and so on, until you can see that Derek has eaten eight. Okay, so then I can count up and I can see that in the same amount of time, Xavier ate 12 slices. 
Okay, so that's just a picture of how of what's happening. If we want to set up something called a proportion, a proportion is just two equal ratios. And so I always recommend labeling your ratios, Xavier to Derek. Then I'm going to go back to my problem, and I can see that the ratio is 3 to 2. And then I'm going to set up another ratio that is going to be equivalent. But this time in the ratio, I want Derek... So I'm going to come down here to my denominator to be a denominator of eight or to have eight slices of pizza. And so I don't know what Xavier is, so I'm going to use a variable X to represent that. So from here, I can, um, I can solve, and we solve proportions by cross multiplying. So we'll multiply two times X, which gives me two X. And then I'll multiply eight times three which gives me 24. And then I have a one-step equation. So 2x, 2 times x, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I'll say that x is equal to 12. And then we always label them so that we know what we're talking about, 12 slices of pizza. A graduation ceremony places graduates in a row of eight. How many rows will be necessary for 136 graduates? Now, in this question, things are a little bit different because it doesn't clearly say a ratio of something to something, but we can look at the question and we can see what's being compared. And in this question, we can see that we are comparing graduates to rows. Okay, the numbers are a little larger, so drawing a tape diagram for this would probably be a little bit more difficult. Um, because you need a lot of space. So we're going to use a proportion here, and I can see it says that graduates are placed in rows of eight. So that means there's eight graduates in each row, and I use one to represent that. And then it wants to know how many rows we're going to need if there's 136 graduates. So I'm going to use uh, X to represent the number of rows because I don't know what that is. And then I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. So I have 8x, eight, 8 times x, equals 136. If I divide both sides by 8, I'll see that x is equal to 17. And then I'm going to label that, and that's 17 rows. OK. This one's going to get a little bit trickier. They're all going to get a little trickier so that you can see different examples. In the sixth grade student council, there are 19 students for every two student council officers. There are a total of there are 63 student sixth graders in the student council. How many sixth graders in student council are officers? Okay, so this one gives us a little bit more information, and that's why it can be tricky because we need to pick out what's important. So it tells us a ratio. There are 19 students for every two officers. And then it tells us that there are a total of 63 sixth graders in student council. So if you if you are noticing, it's actually giving us various ratios. So at first it told us there's students, and it said that there are 19 students. Then it said there are officers, and it said there are two officers, and then it tells us they're talking about the total number of sixth graders in student council. So we're going to also list total. But in this example, with that ratio, we have to find that. So if we know if there are two officers and 19 students in that ratio, then that represents a total of 21 people that we're talking about, 21 sixth graders in student council. And then we can see that's what it was actually comparing. So it wants to know how many sixth graders in student council are officers. So when I look to actually create a ratio, it's talking about officers right here. And it wants to know how many sixth graders. So that would be our total. So we're going to actually use those two pieces of information. So I'm going to set up a ratio of officers to total sixth graders. And I can see that that is 2 to 21. You have to be careful here because it would be really easy to put 2 to 19 because that's the ratio it gave you. Um, and then... It wants to know if there are a total of 63 sixth graders. So I'm going to put X because that's what we want to know, how many are officers. 
Now, this is um, this would be a great example of where you could draw a tape diagram because the numbers are fairly small. So I can show you that. that you can also solve your proportion by cross multiplying, and then you can also um, you can also you may also be able to see that there's a re relationship between 21 and 63. So I'll show you that first. 21 and 63, you may notice that that is a multiple of 3 times 3. And so then you can do this right here. This is called scaling times 3. And you can see that x is going to be equal to 6 officers. If I draw a tape diagram, I'd have something very similar. Officers to total should have a little image or rectangle worth 2 and then one much larger one worth 21. And then I would want to keep going with this until I have 63 total. And so you can see that it works out this way. There's 63 and there's six officers. So that's another way you can solve it. Let's look at this question. In a science experiment, two of the nine trials are failures. The next phase requires 54 trials. Based on the data, how many trials are expected to be successful? So this one's a little bit tricky um, because of the, the way it's worded. So it tells us a ratio, two of the nine trials are failures. So that would mean that two represents the number of failures. And of the nine trials, would represent the total trials. And then it says in the next phase, there's going to be 54 total trials, and it wants to know how many trials are going to be successful. So there's a little bit of information that it didn't tell us right off the bat that we're going to have to figure out, and that's the number of successful tri trials. So a trial is either a failure or a success, and so I can do the math to figure out that that's referring to seven in that um, initial ratio. So now we can set up our proportion, and we, we can do it different ways. So I'll show you if we set, showed failures to total. So if we use the information it gave us, we have two to nine. And then it wants to know if there's 54 total trials, okay? And we don't know how many failures that would be, so we'd represent that with x. We're going to cross multiply. So we'd have 9x equals 108. I'm going to divide both sides by 9. Have x is equal to 12. And that would represent failures. Now, this is where it's a little tricky. The question wants to know how, how many are going to be successful. So you would have to do some math and you'd have to subtract to find out how many would be a success. So I would need to take my total 54 and subtract 12 to find out the number of successful trials. You could also set up your proportion with successful to total which would be seven to nine, and you could solve that way. So either of those are we're going to result in the same answer, which is 40, um, 42 successful trials. I'll go ahead and um, circle that so we can see. Okay. Last question. A bag of potato chips contains 13 ounces and serves four and a half people. How many people will a 52 ounce bag of potato chips serve? Okay, so here we have our comparison. If we look at it, we're looking for our ratio. It tells us 13 ounces and serves four and a half people. So we have ounces to servings. So I can label that 13 to four and a half. Don't let that decimal throw you off at all. And then it says, how many people will a 52 ounce bag serve? So we want to know how many, if there are 52 ounces. I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to get 13 X equals 234. And then I can divide by both sides by 13. And I can see that X is equal to 18 servings. So that one was actually pretty easy. All that we had to do was not be afraid of the decimal. <laughs>
Okay, so in this video, we um, we learned what an equivalent ratio is and how we can apply equivalent ratios to solve problems. Um, great job, and thanks for learning alongside. I sure hope that helped. Check out the links below and be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.